Are we good? Hello? Hello? Hey guys! Today I thought we would do some plant repotting. There's some plants I've been really, really needing to repot. And by repot, I mean move from water to soil. So pot for the first time in soil. I think today I'm going to go for it. So what we have so far, we'll see what else I decide to do, are these parallel peperomias. I'm going to pot them up together. You'll see me haul these in my most exciting plant haul. I think I've posted this whole year. Then I have just a bunch of arrowhead propagations with some serious roots that I've had sitting on this wall over here in those hanging, turquoise colored vases, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they've just been growing in water and this is what, this is what I'm left with. Some crazy roots. So I'm excited to get this potted up and I'm going to pot the variegated arrowhead with the mother variegated arrowhead because this guy is just outgrown its little nursery pot. So it's time, it is time, we're gonna do it. And then we'll see, there are some other plants that I may end up repotting. We'll just see how long this ends up being. So let's just get into it. And bear with me if I'm out of breath, I'm now over six months pregnant. So <laughs> I'm basically out of breath all the time. It's hard to breathe these days. I am also going to be wearing some gloves. These are actually my cleaning gloves. Ew, I hate when they get wet on the inside. Ugh but anything to protect baby, you know? There can be bacteria in soil that can harm your unborn child, I've learned. So we're gonna wear these gloves to protect the little baby cooking in there. I think first I'm going to get the two uh, parallel peperomia potted up together. That's what I'm doing first. So where did my pots go? I have soil over on the ground here, a thing of water here, and then my pots over on the ground here as well. Is this too big? No, this is a good size. I'm going to put them in this terracotta pot. I really like planting peperomia in terracotta because the terracotta absorbs water as they're being bottom watered and I do prefer to bottom water peperomia. I have killed this kind of peperomia in the past from overwatering, and terracotta will help me avoid that. Hopefully. These guys are like screaming for their lives right now. <laughs> That's sad. Okay, anyway, I'm going to put some soil down there. And while we repot, I thought we could talk a little bit about some random things. First of which is the Planty Kindness Project. Just wanna to touch on this briefly. I got tagged by Kaylee Ellen. Uh, Nicole from Mind Clean Leaves sent me a text message to do this video. And then Pammy's, oh gosh, what's, there's so many planty pams. Pammy's planty things. I'll link their channels in the description. If you wanna go check out their channels, also message me to do a video on this. I didn't wanna do a full video on this just because I am a very opinionated person and when people are rude unnecessarily, it kinda of gets me heated. Oh, I'm making a mess. Planty kindness project tag it does make some really good points and brings attention to some things that go around in the plant community, mostly other communities. The plant community is like 90% nice. I just worry, I don't know. It's like our community is so mostly nice, but there are those few that aren't. But basically my thoughts on the Planty Kindness Project are the whole point of it is to be nice wherever you can be nice. And like I said, for the most part, I think especially people in the plant community are nice. And I do think a lot of the times even people who aren't, who don't seem nice, who may be leaving like mean, I mean, I say this because I do think a lot of the time they come from a place of caring. There are of course rude comments, but I think the biggest issue, like there's always going to be those trolls who just wanna bring people down. And honestly, there's no way to avoid that. Like we can talk about this and talk about this, talk about bullying and all of that again and again, but at the end of the day, those people who feel so sad about themselves, they need to let it out on somebody else, are going to continue to be there. No matter what people say and how many times we drill that, drill the topic, you know? As far as like those troll people, I think that they're kind of a lost cause at this point until they figure out their own things in their own lives. like. They're just never going to listen to this kind of a thing. But something I do think is an issue that people don't really realize or think about. A problem I've had are people leaving me 
not inherently rude comments, like not comments that they're purposely trying to make me feel bad. People leaving comments like, I love your videos so much, but your voice is so annoying. Like things like that. I don't want to like sound like a baby or like it's not appreciated because I do think people come from a place of caring, but unsolicited advice and depending on how it's worded can be really rude. Like I don't even mean, I know I've talked about this a little bit with my pregnancy, but even in just regular plant videos, I get comments all the time. First of all, a lot of people think my voice is annoying or my voice inflections. I do up talk a lot, which I know in public speaking is a big no, no, but I'm not, a public speaker. This is a very casual environment, you know? And I'm just talking how I talk. This is how I talk in real life. People give me crap in real life for up talk as well. So, but that's just one I get quite a bit. People say, oh, I love your videos, but your voice is so annoying or you need to change your up talk, like things like that. And it's like, even if they, they can say the nicest thing, they love my channel, they watch every video, but saying all of that nice stuff and then leaving, but your voice is annoying at the end is hurtful. And I think people don't realize how hurtful like little comments like that can be, but they can be. So whether it's a constructive criticism or not, uh, some things just aren't necessary to say. Why leave a comment if my voice is annoying? Why not just not watch my videos? Like I'm not going to change my voice. Filming a video is hard enough. Sitting in front of a camera when you're at home alone and putting it on the internet is hard enough to not feel weird doing. Um, without having to actively think about changing my voice. Recently, actually, within the last couple of weeks, I got a comment. She said, Harley, I love your channel. I've watched every single one of your videos. She went on and on about how much she liked my channel, but then she's like, your voice drives me crazy. And I basically, I, not word for word, but basically she said, your voice drives me crazy. It's really annoying and you should change it. And then I commented back to her and said, hi, thank you so much for watching my channel. While I appreciate your support on my channel, if my voice annoys you, there are other excellent, there are so many excellent planty YouTubers out there that you could be watching. I told her I'm not going to actively try to change my voice, but I'm sure you'll be able to find another channel, channel you love where their voice doesn't annoy you. She freaked out at me and called me an asshole because I didn't take her criticism, which I didn't ask, I didn't really ask for it in the first place. I don't know, I just, like, we, YouTubers aren't immune to normal human emotions. I'm the most emotional person I know and probably my whole family knows, but I just think that people have this misconception that because it's on the internet and freedom of speech, which freedom of speech is great, but you, we need to be mindful of that that speech that we're <laughs> putting out there. Like, just because we have the freedom to say things doesn't mean we always should. I don't think that girl's intent was to hurt my feelings. I do get a lot of comments like that though, I have to be honest with you, especially lately. I don't know what it is. I've never, like, I've been doing this for almost two years now and only recently have people started saying that to me. So I don't know, I don't know how my voice has changed so dramatically, but. <laughs> We need to be mindful of what we're putting out there. People can be so nice and say one hurtful thing and that's what sticks out. That's just how human brains work, I think. Most human brains, not everybody's. Okay, here's the peperomia, parallel peperomia. I think it looks really, really cute. People think YouTubers are immune to, or just kind of, since we're putting videos on the internet, we have to deal with people's comments like that. And it's like, yeah, we do have to deal with them to an extent. But that doesn't mean that we just have to roll over and die and like accept the rude comment or ignore the rude comment. Like I'm just not the kind of person that I can ignore somebody being rude. If nobody points out that that person, what that person is saying isn't nice, they're never going to learn, you know? So if somebody's rude to me, I, in the nicest way possible, tell them that they're being rude and that I'd like them to go somewhere else. Just because YouTube is my job doesn't mean that I have to just roll over and take whatever comments people give me. I can stand up for myself, you know? Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. But if you're one of those people who can just ignore it and move on with your day, good for you. I wish I could be more like that. I, I really, really wish I could be like that. Okay, here's the arrowhead plant roots. Just pulled it out of its nursery pot. And I'm going to put this in a size larger terracotta. Again, I like putting arrowheads in terracotta because I bottom water them. That's just kind of my thing about the Planty Kindness Project. People don't always mean, mean to come off as rude. Like they just don't realize that even constructive criticism can come off as rude and hurtful depending on how it's stated and if 
the advice was solicited, you know, I don't know. I just don't think people always realize that they're being rude. And that's why if somebody's being rude, A, you can ignore them, or B, we can acknowledge or we can we can tell them why that was hurtful to us or why why that wasn't helpful, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, that's kind of all I'm going to say on that. That was kind of a lot to say on that. I just, I hope I got my, my thoughts across adequately. Um, my brain's kind of jumbled these days, you know, pregnancy brain. We just need to be nice and just because we can express our thoughts doesn't mean we always should. If you don't like somebody's video because they're wearing make too much makeup, they're not wearing enough makeup, their voice is annoying, you don't like the content they put out, why, why say that? Like go to somebody else's video. There's so many excellent creators on YouTube. So chances are if you don't like that one person, go somewhere else. Don't even leave, leave the mean comment. It comes back to the fact that you can say, we can say whatever we want, but maybe we shouldn't all the time. There are a lot of little plant babies in here. Oops, I broke one. That was bound to happen. These are so tangled. I think I'm going to leave some of these in the water. I just wanna repot the variegated arrowhead right now. And I do have confetti, some regular arrowhead, um, strawberry cream arrowhead in here, so. There's just a little bit of everything going on. I don't know why. Oh, my legs are asleep. Oh. Hang on, let the blood flow back to them. Okay, we good, we good. I don't know, I like the look of plants when other people pot them different like varieties together, like especially Arrowhead. I think it looks really cool to have the all the different colors mixed together in one pot, but I just, I don't know why I can't get myself to do it. I don't know why. This is crazy. I should have done this forever ago. This is such a tangled mess. And it's okay to break some of the roots in a little bit, but I don't wanna break so much of the roots, especially because these plants are already going to be in shock. They've been in water for a long, long time. So I don't know. We'll see. Jeez. There we go. Pull them out one by one. <laughs> ah! Maybe I should have just left them in the water. No, they were really outgrowing that little container. Yay. Okay, put those guys aside and put all of these. Ooh, this is gonna be a lovely plant. It's gonna look a whole lot fuller. I am making a mess. <laughs> this is stressing me out. Now I'm going to add more soil to hold these babies in place. I haven't repotted plants. I think it's been like two or three months since I filmed one of these videos. That's crazy. I used to do these like every single month, multiple times a month. I got pregnant and all of a sudden I just don't wanna repot my plants. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to water it a little bit to help compact the soil down a little more around the roots. And then so to get any air bubbles out so that I can add more soil as needed. Oh, my legs are asleep again. It's so weird because <coughs> it's so weird because I have been filming like crazy lately. The last few weeks I've been filming at least three videos a week, at least three, sometimes four, sometimes five. And then um, in one more week, I'll be filming every single day for two weeks, uh, six days a week for two weeks actually. And it's like, I have all these videos filmed and I feel like I've been on here a lot. But when I look at my channel, the uploads don't reflect that. And it's because I have been pre-filming a lot of stuff for when I have my baby. I mean, hopefully he doesn't come this early, but I just wanna have stuff filmed far enough in advance. I've had, I've had several friends have their babies at 27, 28 weeks, and I am 28 weeks now. So it just scares me. Um, I wanna be prepared for if that happens. So I'm trying to have a lot of stuff filmed so that I'll still be uploading. If there's any videos you've been dying to see or you would like to see or I could try, then please, please leave a comment and let me know because I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> that looks so good. Wow, the, my, my original one in the little nursery pot, the not propagated one, was looking a little gangly and small, but once I got these propagations in with it. Excellent. I decided I'm going to repot one more plant and it's going to be the other plant that was propagating up on my wall. 
I'm going to repot this one just because it has been growing like crazy and literally the roots like had nowhere else to go. I mean, they're molded into the shape of the vessel they were propagating in. And these guys are just cuttings, okay? These were teeny when I cut them and now this is almost as long as I am tall. That's a little dramatic actually. Just about though, another foot or so and it'd be the same height as me. So I'm going to pot these up into soil and I actually wanted to put a Cebu Blue Pothos in my baby nursery anyway. So yeah, maybe I'll just put these propagations in there for him. I have two videos to edit about the baby nursery. So actually three, I have one with some DIYs I've done for it. Um, I have a vlog of like the process so far from start to finish. Oh my gosh, I have four. I have a uh, plants for, for a low light baby nursery. And then the last one is of course the nursery tour. I haven't filmed that one yet, but it'll, it's coming up. I'm almost done with it. So I'm excited to get that one. And uh, for a lot of, a lot of people are like saying like, oh, you can't put that. Like when I post on Instagram about a plant I'm going to put in my baby nursery, a lot of people post things like, oh, you can't have that in your baby room. That's toxic. I'm not going to put the plants like on the floor or on surfaces he'll be able to reach. So most of the plants in there are going to be um, hanging so or on shelves where he will not be able to reach until he's an adult I do have a full video all about the potting soil I use for a majority of my house plants that I will link in the description if you want to watch this is the same mix I talked about the general purpose mix that I use oh, this one has gotten so long Ugh. should have pulled my hair back I do this all the time <laughs> you guys know me oh my gosh that looks so good I'll show you, I'm gonna go set them somewhere so I can show you like the full perspective of the plant of each of these three plants I potted. I'm gonna give you some close-ups of them, but this looks cute. Even just sitting on this really messy table. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so here's the Cebu Blue, I'll pot it up. It is so long. Ignore my messy floor. I actually think I'm going to cut it though, like maybe here, actually here and here, and then I'll propagate the rest and then probably add them into this plant at some point to make like the top part more full. Here is my variegated arrowhead all potted up. It looks so much better, so much more full. I love this one. I'm so happy I ended up repotting it. These are the containers they used to be in. So yeah, really happy about that. And then last up is this Peperomia. And I also really like the way it looks. Fingers crossed this guy fares better this time. Since I mentioned it, I'm just going to finish off, I'm just going to finish off this video by showing you how I ended up cutting the Cebu Blue Pothos to propagate to make my plant a little bit more full. So these are all of the leaves I was able to get off the vines. And basically I just went to all of the vines and cut um, like inch, inch and a half sections of stem for each leaf. And I am just going to put them in the water. You could also do this in soil. I just prefer water propagation, especially. I'm going to repot the individual little leaves into my main plant and not like make a whole new plant, if that makes sense. Really easy, really straightforward. These Cebu Blue root so quickly. And I also want to say, if you're propagating stems, um, if you have if you have sections where there's a node or like right here, an aerial root, you can also cut those sections and stick them in soil or water and they usually will root. Although if there's a leaf, I, ha I found that there's a higher success rate. So that's why I just do the leaves, but um, you could definitely cut like this big of sections uh, from each of the, the nodes. Like here there's three and end up with plants. So yeah, you don't have to just propagate leaves. You can also propagate uh, nodes without leaves. Actually, you know what? I lied. So I ended up cutting each of those individual little nodes and I'm just going to drop them into the water. And if I end up with some new baby little plantlets, then great. If any of them just turn to mush, that's fine too. Might as well try. I felt bad being so wasteful when there were so many nodes with pretty good starts pretty good aerial root starts. 
that I could potentially get more, more plant from. So we're gonna give it a go. And I am just going to drop them in there and hope they do their thing and turn into full plants. Last thing, I swear, and then this video is ending. Um, this is how the Cebu Blue looks now that I trimmed it. So, trimmed quite a bit off. But now it'll be able to grow bushier as opposed to longer, which is kind of the look I'm going for now. So those are all the plants I'm going to be repotting today. This was a random, random video. I hope everything I said made sense, but I'm banking on probably half of it not making sense. So <laughs> if you understood the point, the points I was trying to make, thanks for understanding. If not, I'm sorry, I'll get better with words. Hopefully, as I turn into an adult, just kidding, I'm already way an adult. As I age and get wiser, hopefully words will become easier for me. Yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.